and the winds were approaching 25 miles per hour. That is lower than the typical standard for cranes, but for this company that was their standard. So in fact they were in the process of securing the crane. They got to the work site this morning at 7, recognized the winds were in the 20 mile an hour plus range and were proceeding to secure the crane, actually to bring it down to a safe and secure position when this incident occurred. Uh, our Department of Buildings personnel had been on the site yesterday to approve the next steps in the work on that building. They had inspected the crane yesterday morning at 6.20 a.m. Uh, and reviewed the uh, work that was being done and had approved it. Again this morning, in fact, no work was done on the site because the crew made the decision immediately to bring the crane down into the secure position and this incident occurred literally as they were lowering the crane to secure it. Uh, we have now uh, some updates on what's being done to secure the area and deal with the aftermath. Obviously, first and foremost, the human effect. Our hearts go out to the families of the individual who's been lost and to all those who have been injured. Uh, we're concerned, obviously, for everyone who lives and works in the area to make sure they'll be safe. The immediate concern relates to the fact that there's been gas leaks as a result of this incident. Uh, FDNY and Con Ed have been sweeping all the related buildings along Worth Street constantly. So far they have not detected the type of gas levels that give them additional fear of any further uh, problems, but they are literally sweeping them every 15 minutes to check uh, gas levels. Uh, there have not been uh, larger evacuations, only those buildings that have been immediately affected, physically affected by the crane uh, hitting them. Uh, the fact is, this is a very, very uh, sad incident. We've lost a life. But if you go out there on the street, as I did, and see uh, what happened here, thank God it was not worse. And in fact, a crew was directing people away from Worth Street as the train was being lowered. So that crew, those construction workers who, in the normal course of their work, as they were lowering the crane, were in fact keeping people away from the site and keeping traffic from proceeding down uh, West Broadway. That is part of why this situation was not even worse. Uh, as I said, FDNY continues sweeping the buildings and securing the situation on the streets along with Con Ed and uh, Department of Buildings. Uh, Con Ed has turned off gas in most of the buildings as a precaution. Uh, and they will be able to uh, resolve the gas leak issue by early afternoon, as far as we know at this point. Um, in addition, we should assume for people uh, who live or work along Worth Street uh, between uh, Hudson and Church that this area is going to be cut off, uh, largely cut off or partially cut off for several days. We'll make every effort to accommodate people. Uh, there's going to be larger disruptions in the area between uh, Canal on the south, and, excuse me, Canal on the north, Chambers on the south, Hudson on the west, and Broadway on the east. That box, we're going to see a lot of disruption in the coming hours and probably next few days as issues are effect, uh, resolved and addressed. Uh, the number one train continues running but is skipping two stops in the affected area. So a number of uh, measures have been taken. Uh, to protect people and make sure that we can focus on the work of uh, addressing the situation and getting things back to normal over the next few days. But it will certainly take several days, certainly no earlier than Monday, possibly longer before we can get things back to normal in these immediate blocks. In addition, uh, we have taken the precaution, even though wind levels have not reached the level that normally would lead to a larger shutdown of cranes around the city. We're taking the precaution of doing that uh, right now. So uh, this type of crane, again, is called a crawler crane. It is not the largest type of crane, which is called a tower crane. But the crawler cranes in this city that are registered with the Department of Buildings, 376 of them, all potentially active today, but not necessarily active. It all depends on the work site. But we're instructing right now all 376 crawler cranes to be secured, whatever is the most secure position for them in a wing condition. They've all been ordered to be secured immediately. In addition, the 43 tower cranes, the larger cranes in the city, have all been ordered to go into a secure position immediately. Uh, those are some of the basic updates. Uh, let me also tell you, uh, throughout the morning, we've been working here at the site with First Deputy Mayor Tony Shores. 
our Commissioner for Ma Emergency Management, Joe Esposito, our Buildings Commissioner, Rick Chandler, uh, from the Fire Department, uh, First Deputy Commissioner Turner and Chief of Department Leonard, uh, from the Police Department, Chief of Department O'Neill, and from Con Ed, Richard Yacco has been the senior Con Ed person on site, and all of those uh, agencies obviously are closely coordinating. I walked the length of the crane. Uh, you can see how uh, powerful the damage was, but you can also see again that it was something of a miracle that there wasn't more impact, and thank God that the, the impact on people wasn't worse, because this is an area that normally would have had a lot of people around it, rush hour in the morning, lower Manhattan, but because, again, the crane was being lowered into the secure position and the construction workers were blocking off the area, uh, the danger to people on the street was lessened, and thank God we, we didn't have more injuries and we didn't lose more people. Uh, just for your knowledge, we uh, just checked the history. This is the first uh, crane collapse in the city since 2008. Uh, a number of precautions were put in place. In fact, there were two major crane collapses in 2008. A number of precautions were put in place at that time that have uh, been very effective in stopping this kind of problem. And in fact, those type of precautions were in place today, which is why this crane was being lowered into a secure position. But something went wrong in that process. There's going to be a full investigation to find out what went wrong. And obviously, if it tells us anything that will lead to uh, other changes going forward. Full police investigation underway. Full Department of Buildings investigation underway. Uh, this is being treated as a scene where uh, we want to get all the facts about what happened here uh, before we can uh, come to further judgments specifically about this incident and about any uh, changes we may want to make as a result. Uh, with that, unless any of my colleagues have anything to add, we'll go to your questions. Mr. Mayor. Yes. Uh, beyond the definition you just described, it, so nothing since 2008. Right. I mean, there really has been an epidemic of, of crane accidents in the city over the past decade. What, what can you do to police this? Uh, I'm going to disagree with the term epidemic. There have been some very serious incidents. And again, uh, I think my predecessor took some major steps after 2008 to change the way cranes were handled. And obviously, those steps worked because here we are eight years later. It's a very painful day. I'm not going to minimize what's happened here. We have to figure out what happened. We have to make sure it doesn't happen again in the future. But I would say differently. We've had some real serious issues on construction sites that we are taking major steps to change and to address. But that is different from what we've seen here. Mayor, this is something that hasn't happened in almost a decade. Sorry. The yeah. other people who were hurt, were they injured by falling debris or the actual crane itself? And where were they located? Uh, I want to see if either uh, Chief O'Neill or who has the best sense of where each individual was. Hit by falling debris. Here, you go ahead. <coughs> Chief Leonard. We had four, uh, four total patients. One was the uh, <coughs> person who was killed upon the impact, and the other people were all uh, hit by falling debris. So they also stand uh, as the mayor reported non-life-threatening injuries. Chief, can you tell us what type of project was going on? What was the construction? I'll, I'll defer to the building. Oh, yeah. <coughs> so the building where the crane was working was at 60 Hudson Street, which is the former Western Union building. Um, we have to do further investigation about what kind of permits were happening, but we do know that. Uh, can you speak up? Sure. Um, the, the work that was ongoing was to replace generators and air conditioning equipment on the roof. So we had full permits for the crane itself. But we're further investigating what, what might have been required for the equipment that was being done, was being installed on the roof. What was the address? 60 Hudson Street, the former Western Union building. And tell them how long this site had been active. So we, we, uh, they've been up for about a week. So they, they put the crane up on January 30. People in the neighborhood say that uh, they noticed a couple of days ago that the, the crane appeared unstable toward the top, that a, that a cable appeared to have broken. Did the inspection yesterday indicate any sort of loss of integrity or stability with that crane? We're unaware of any complaints of that nature at all. Yesterday's inspection was on the ground as they were putting an extension on the boom, Chief, and it was successful. Chief, can you describe the damage to the other building when it fell or you or, or to, to yeah, the other building? So, the, the, what, uh, the other damage to the buildings was the parapets uh, on two of the buildings next to the New York Law School. So those are in danger of collapsing right now, so we're, we're cordoning off the street out of a 50-foot collapse zone, and we'll have the sidewalk shed erected immediately, so 
to minimize the disruption to those buildings. Can you explain the process of when you're saying how are you going to shore this up or, or how right. are you going to secure? Do you, do you take it down piece by piece, et cetera? Yeah. Sure. Well, they'll they'll take they'll take down the, the parapet. I think that's the only thing that was that, that is in danger of collapse right now. So we'll have the we we'll haven't determined what contractor will be in here. But the first things first is to get the sidewalk shed in, and then we'll take we, the parapet. We have we have removed parts. I'm sorry. We have removed parts of the parapets already. We sent our people up there, and then con in conjunction with the uh, building department inspectors to make it partially safe right now. But then uh, buildings will issue orders to have uh, it professionally done. There's video of the crane being lowered. It's coming down, and then all of a sudden it comes down quickly. Have you talked to the operator to see what exactly happened? Chief O'Neill. Sure. NYPD, in conjunction with the Department of Buildings, is conducting an investigation. Our detective Robert, bureau, Robert. our detective bureau is uh, is working uh, with the DOB on this, and we we have we're interviewing the crane operator right now. And what did he tell you? Uh, we're in the middle of the interview. It's not Why over yet. Why would it be a police investigation? Just in case there's anything criminal. This is, we have to consider all factors here. Chief, can you tell us about the victims, uh, the deceased, the folks who are in the hospital, their genders, their ages, anything about that? No, nah, we'll release that later. We're in the middle of making notifications. The mayor said that the crane was an abuse. The length of the boom and the approximate weight of the boom and, the, and or the whole thing, the, the crane and the, and the boom itself. You want those? Those? So, so I have the, yeah, give them a sense. So the boom length for this this unit was 565 feet. So it's a very large crane, and it was approved, and it was submitted by an engineer. Went over with my staff, um, so that was approved for that. It's a capacity of 330 tons. So it's a very very large crane, uh, perfectly uh, fine in terms of the way we, it was engineered. But obviously, it requires an investigation as to why this happened. Okay, hold on, hold on. Go ahead. Say again. You said the crane wasn't used yesterday because you guys are investigating. No, no, no. I'm sorry. Let me say it. I want to make sure you hear it carefully. Yesterday, 6.20 a.m., uh, Department of Building staff were on the site because the crane was going to be added to. There was an extension being added. The Department of Buildings does not allow that to happen until it is approved. So I want to be very clear. When our crane operators set up a beginning, they have to have Department of Buildings approval. When they change any of their protocol, they have to have Department of Buildings approval. They're not allowed to act or do any work until Department of Buildings is on site and has approved. That happened yesterday morning. So was, when was the last time it was used? Like well, that after that, right? I'm assuming it was used yesterday. We'll have to verify that. I'm not sure what work was done yesterday. <laughs> but again, no work was done this morning upon the arrival the crew seeing that the wind, temper, uh, the wind speeds were around 20 miles per hour and that their manufacturer requirement was when it got to 25 to bring it down, they literally didn't even start work. They just started the immediate uh, securing of the crane. You said that there was an extension Hold on a sec. Go ahead. It. You said there was an extension added to mm -hmm. it. So how long was it before? Did, did, did it mean that before it was less than 565? Yeah, it was less than 565. I can't tell you what the, how long the extension was, but it was permitted to go to a maximum of 565, and this extension brought it to that length. All right, we'll get you. But we'll get you the details. But we can get you where it was yeah. before and after, yeah. Do you have any working theories on what happened? I know we're early in this. We don't, we don't want to offer anything hypothetical. We want to really check what happened here and get an answer. Mayor, yeah. Mayor are you concerned that, you know, with there's been an increase or, a, or several notable construction deaths in the city lately or deaths of pedestrians on the street around construction sites. Are you worried that the pace of development in Manhattan is putting New Yorkers at risk? Uh, I'm worried that we've had several incidents uh, <coughs> that I think were avoidable and obviously that first and foremost involves the companies and how they've done their work. But we are adding a large number of inspectors. That was part of our last budget. We'll, we'll give you more details on that. Uh, and we're going to be very, very stringent on this point. Uh, but that's a different issue than what we have here. I really want to separate the two pieces very, very sharply. So I want, I want people to hear me loud and clear. We've had some construction site incidents that are very troubling. We have more and more inspectors who are going to get on top of that. We're going to be very tough on those companies. This is a totally different matter. This was a company that was putting their crane into the secure position as we would have wanted them to and that we inspected as recently as yesterday. So this is an entirely different matter. Mayor, can you tell us who the company is? The company? Hold on, what? we're going to be with you in a sec. Go ahead, the company? The company is Galasso uh, Trucking and Rigging. G-A-L-A-S-S-O. And the company that the crane? G-A-L-A. And, and it's Galasso. Galasso. And the crane? Bay Crane Company is the owner. Bay, Com Bay, Bay Crane, crane owns the, the crane Galasso operates, correct? Yep. Okay, in the back? 
I heard. The crane, is it, is it 330 tons, the crane, or it can handle loads up to 330 tons with the, the wet snow that we had today? Is that another factor in safety and whether or not you could have to bring it down because of the way that the crane is held down? It's the, the capacity of the crane is 330 tons, uh, not the weight of the boom itself. Um, I, can't, I can't imagine the snow was a factor at all, but that will be considered under the investigation. Any other questions? Does this kind of a crane have an onboard computer? Would that be part of an investigation? It will be part of the investigation, and I'm not sure of the answer to your question. Where was the base of the crane located? Where Onworth. Yeah, Onworth between Hudson and West, West Broadway. Broadway. Yeah. Is, it, is this what's referred to as a mobile crane, or a mobile crane is smaller? Is this considered a mobile crane? Yes, it's, this is a mobile crane because it has a crawler on it, so it can move. Okay, last call. Any other questions? Was the victim sitting in the car? Uh, on the driver's side, I believe. Do we know? I'm not sure if that's okay. the term. Okay, we'll check that. What block? Okay, hold on, hold on. Just to hold on, hold on. The car was parked on Worth between Church and West between Church and West Broadway. But we can't. We need to get more detail to tell you exactly where uh, the individual was sitting in the back. So um, there was an extension added to the to the boom today. Is that correct? Yesterday. Yesterday, correct, yes. Rick? Correct. Was yesterday. The first time it had been elevated? Was it yesterday was the first time it was elevated? Well, been no, it days. had been doing work. They'd been putting loads up on the roof, and I don't have the details of how many or how often, but they had been working. Right. So, Rich, the best to understand, they had been doing work over the last few days. Okay. They had to do, hold on, folks. They had been doing work over the last few days. They were then trying to do work that required reaching farther back on the roof or higher, and so they applied for an extension. <clears throat> They were granted an extension by Department of Buildings inspectors who were on the site yesterday at 620. And then we don't we will find out whether they did some of that work yesterday. But again, this morning they did no work on the site. They were simply in the process of securing the uh, crane. I have noticed like several vehicles that are on Wood Street look like city vehicles. Would this be like a city employee? We don't, you know, I don't think we have the details yet to offer. On so we haven't made any family notification right. Let's, yet. So we need to get more information. Yeah. What type of buildings were evacuated, residential, commercial? I think everything's been commercial. Non-residential. Right? Yeah. Non-residential. Uh, New York Law School and some other surrounding buildings, but nothing residential at this point. And again, ongoing sweeps by FDNY and Con Ed on the gas situation. Uh, so far, at least as of a few minutes ago, they had not found any uh, gas issues in a building that would cause further evacuation, but that's going to be monitored constantly until the gas is cut off, which will be by the early afternoon. Yes? So what is the message for residents in the area that's impacted? How do they stay updated in terms of, you know, updates from Con Ed, updates from the city? We'll be putting out updates constantly, all the different ways we do it, obviously, uh, to, to the people of the city. I think uh, folks who live and work in the immediate area should assume a disruption that will go through the weekend, I think, and, and into Monday, even potentially longer. I think better safe than sorry. People should assume several days of disruption. We want to do this very carefully. We want to keep everyone safe. But if people need access to a building uh, to get their belongings or for something urgent, they will be escorted by NYPD at the appropriate time and in a safe manner into a building. Yeah. The base of the crane was parked at what exact address? The base it was between the base of the crane was between uh, West Broadway and Hudson, so right in the mid block, on, on the north side, on Worth, on the north side of the building, on Worth Street. And can you tell us which building was damaged? The address of the building that had the parapets. It wasn't New York Law School. It was a different building. Well, the parapets. I don't remember, but there was four buildings sustained. Uh, North. North. There were four buildings sustained uh, sustained the damage uh, with the parapets. One of them, at least, was uh, was New York Law School. It was from the corner of uh, of uh, a church moving west down the block. So it was the first four buildings that are affected. Yeah, and one of them definitely was a New York Law School building. Victims pronounced dead on the scene. Yes. Where were the other three victims? Were they on the street or in the car? Again, we're going to get all those details as the investigation proceeds, but emphasizing that uh, none of them, from what we know at this point, have life-threatening injuries. Two in serious condition, one with minor injuries. Mayor, I know it's early. This Galasso Construction Company, or maybe the Commissioner, know, any violations? Have you had a chance to check their history yet to see? We can say initially, and Commissioner, you can step in. We, we obviously asked the same question this morning on both uh, Galasso, which was operating the site, and Bay Crane, which owns the crane. Uh, no recent uh, negative activity. So at this point, we believe that they've been doing their work effectively. But again, there will be a full investigation of everything that happened here. Thank you.
Anything else? Last call. Can you explain yes. why this might cause a gas leak? <clears throat> just the sheer impact. Who wants to speak to that? Sure. Oh, oh, it's, it's, in, uh, it's just the impact of this large crane. Over. The impact of the large crane striking strike the ground also broke a water main, too. So the water main was contained. The, the Con Ed is actively working on the gas leak. Just the impact. Yeah, hold on, from Con Ed. We have our, uh, good morning. Uh, we have our, our gas mains are on the ground, of course. Uh, some of the, uh, the pipe uh, cannot withstand a tremendous impact like that. Uh, we're currently in the process of isolating that main. In the meantime, the uh, fire department, the police department, and Con Edison are scanning all the buildings constantly. They're making sure that there is uh, no gas leaks that could uh, cause a problem inside the building. So we're, we're watching for that. We're meticulous about that. We're also watching our electric and steam is shut off. Uh, I could assure you that Con Edison is using all its resources uh, assisting the mayor's office uh, to make sure everything is safe as far as the utilities are concerned. And can you say and spell your first and last name and your title of Con Edison? Uh, Richard Yako, Y-A-K-O. I'm a senior specialist in the uh, emergency response group. Okay, last call. Any other questions? Uh, Mayor, yes. Can you say anything in Spanish? I don't have anything right now. We'll get you something later. Okay. Anything else? Last call. Okay, thanks everyone. We'll get you updates later. Thank you. Okay, let's let's go out. Let's